from Raven Saunders participating in the Rio Olympics to Hurricane Matthew to the election of President-elect Donald Trump to the Ruth and Slager trials, Channel 4 social media manager Andy Paris talks to me one-on-one -on -one for a special edition of Quintus Close-Ups. Andy! Hey, Quentin. It's so good to see you again. So good to see you. I appreciate this. No, appreciate you having me. Oh, anytime. You know, we're sitting here, what, I guess a couple days after Christmas, and we're heading into 2017. But, you know, as we sit here at Channel 4 here in Mount Pleasant, it, <laughs> there's so much news that has happened over the past couple of months here in Charleston. Yes. It's, Charleston has an energy about it. It seems like there's always something happening here. Mm. Okay. And let me talk to you about a couple of the stories. Okay. First and foremost, uh, let me go to the mistrial, which was declared in Michael Slager trade case. Right. I know that you guys have covered it from day one. Uh, when you look back at the mistrial on that particular Monday to right now, what is the biggest thing that sticks out to you? Um, it was always going to be tricky. I never thought they were, personally, I never thought they were going to get a murder conviction. Mm -hmm. I always thought it was going to come down to the, um, to the uh, manslaughter. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, that's, that's what it sounds like. I, I, we still haven't heard a whole lot from the jurors um, other than the foreman, but um, I mean, I think I think people who actually followed it learned a lot, uh, you know, and, and learned that there was a little bit more to it than, than what was on the video. And I think the foreman even came out, like he said he was going to, you know, he was pretty convinced of the murder until he learned some of the details. So um, it'll be interesting to see what happens next. Now we have the federal trial, right? Yes. I, and then and then he could always be tried again by the state. Mm -hmm. So. Um, It'll be interesting. I mean, there's there's a you know that that was definitely the the most grayest of, of the two trials we're having. You know, obviously with Dylan Roof, there really wasn't any surprise there. Mm -hmm. That that'll come up next year yeah. when we'll find out whether the jury thinks he should serve the death penalty or not. And I forgot to actually just at the top yes. of this particular okay. interview, but it's still a developing story right now. Right. As you know, uh, Charles attorney and former United States congressional candidate Curtis Bostick was arrested in Kentucky allegedly for stealing horses. As we said it right now, what is that all about? Um, I, well, I haven't seen a lot about that. Just what I've been reading on social media. We mm -hmm. had a little report based right. on the information that came out. And he's, he's got his mugshot with Curtis Bostick on there. And, <laughs> and that was why he was booked in. That was interesting. Yeah. Uh, I've never met him personally. Um, from what I've read on social media, his son saying that this was actually more of a case of trying to rescue a horse. Right. Um, don't know yet. But I'm sure that's why you know we just wait on the uh, legal system to run its course, and we'll know what's what's going on with that. Right. And then right now it's just allegations. Right. Let me turn to downtown. As you know, Dylan Roof was found guilty in the Muppet Manion murders. Right. Uh, what was the reaction that you heard from many people and really your viewers? Just about him being found guilty. Right. Um, like, I don't think anybody was surprised. Yeah. Um, it's been bizarre. There were some bizarre turns with him wanting to represent himself, so. firing his attorneys, bringing them back on, um, and a lot of people didn't know if, you know, if that meant, you know, and and like for instance, the jury didn't come right back. I think a lot of people were expecting to come right back, but right. there were 33 charges, and I think they did their job of. You know, going through each charge to make sure the evidence matched each each one of those 33 charges. But um, other than that, there weren't really any surprises. Um, you know, he was pretty much. Uh, there isn't any evidence they didn't have. They had eyewitness. They had um, confession. They right. had they had him on video. They right. had, they had everything. Same. So now it just comes a matter of whether he deserves life in prison or the death penalty. Um, but. As far as anybody, I don't think there's any doubt. I think the, the even I mean, and they've said from the beginning, you know, he did this. Right. Um, now the big question comes. Now this is what everybody's been playing for is the death penalty. Mm -hmm. His attorneys have been trying, you know, despite his best efforts to, you know, mount this defense of him to say, look, he doesn't deserve it. You know, we've heard talk about um, whether he's mentally ill, that kind of stuff, and he's doing his best to keep that stuff out of the evidence. Mm. But um, so 2017 we'll be looking back at that year and going okay what happened with that? Right. that that's where everything's that's where we're gonna learn everything about this. And we are still learning about Governor Nikki Haley becoming 
Well, she, actually, she's a nominee for the United States Ambassador to the UN. Right. Um, what are you hearing from your viewers and many of your social media followers about her pick to become the next United States Ambassador to the UN? I think everybody's just kind of watching. It's like, okay, I mean, she has, what, two years left? Right. Right. And um, I think everybody's just kind of go, okay. I mean, um, probably not, definitely not the most controversial of his picks. An mm -hmm. interesting pick um, in a lot of ways. Um, I don't know that she's had the credentials. That I've been reading a lot about this, but right. some of the past ambassadors are like right. that who've really had, you know, just a really big resume. Right. Um, but then again, you've seen a lot of people who, you know, it is definitely an interesting pick. Not, I haven't seen it criticized a whole lot, mm -hmm. but it does leave the state in an interesting move now. Now we will find out, you know, um, if she is um, approved, then we. Could have, then we'll have a new governor, Henry McMaster, who probably a lot of people are familiar with. He's been around for a long time. I, I think I first interviewed him 15 years ago when yeah. he was running for lieutenant governor. That's right. So um, that'll be interesting. And we still don't know then who would the next lieutenant governor would be because um, Hugh Leatherman, who was the next in line, has already said, I, yeah. no thanks, but no thanks. thanks. Personally, I wouldn't mind being lieutenant governor. It sounds mm -hmm. like a pretty cool job. You don't oh, do a whole lot. A lot. It's mostly <laughs> ceremonial. Yes, yes. Well, let me turn to Donald Trump per se, because obviously he has been elected the next president of the United States. Right. When that happened on that particular night, what were you hearing from the views and social media follows then? Um, I think a lot of it was surprise. I mean, a lot of it was surprise. Some of it was vindication. Depends okay. what side you're on. Okay. You know, a lot of people are like, "Hey, we told you. You know, we were telling you this all along. You guys didn't believe us." A lot of people are going, "Wait, this reality TV guy really just pulled this off." So um, that's, it's really fascinating as to see what's going to happen next. I really have no idea. Mm -hmm. um, and it's been, um, but uh, I mean, what have you heard? What, I mean, you, you probably, you know, um, hear as much as I do about that. I mean, you go on social media, you can't get away from it now. Right. Some days, I mean, there's literally been days where I'm like, I'm literally not going right. to go on Twitter <laughs> today. Or Facebook. I'm, I'm done hearing about it. Yeah, right. Facebook too. It's like, Okay, I'm just dying today yeah. because I mean there are just no there are no shortage of opinions on this, mm -hmm. and it's just it's very loud sometimes. Describe to me the following one word: uh, the Wild Wings downtown closing. Um, I honestly never went. Um, if I'm going downtown, hopefully I'm going somewhere. Um, you know, I've never been before or can't go anywhere else. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the magic of Charleston. Um, we're seeing some of that. I think we're actually working on a story about that today. Mm -hmm. where, you know. Lots of chains are moving in, and I don't hate chains by any means. And you know, sometimes when I'm a tourist in another city, I might go to a chain because I've never heard of this other place. Right. You know, and I don't know if I'm going to be paying you know twenty dollars for French fries right. or whatever. But so they they have their place. But um, you know, if I think like anything, it's moderation. If you can have a good mix of you know um, locally owned um, restaurants and then maybe some chains as well. Um, but um, I never. I'm, I, Personally, for me, living nearby, there's a long list of restaurants I haven't been to yet, and the downtown Wild Wings wasn't on that list, you know, so, but I'm sure for some people it was. Yeah. Describe to me the following one word, 526. 526. I think we're going to be, at this rate, we're going to be talking about that in 2020. Right. I, you know, that story, it, I mean, We've been talking about it for a decade now, yes. and you know it's and well, our reporters, you know, namely Bill Burr right. and, and sometimes Larry Rollo, right. and our photographer Jason Ty will right. make that long trip to Columbia to Columbia and listen to the um, the state infrastructure bank talk right. about it with the local officials, and you know it was it was looking good for a little while at this point in this year, then it was all but dead. Now they're you know now it's been given a slight reprieve, so. No idea what's going to go on with that. I mean, at this rate, I mean, you know, 2020, we're going to be going, well, what's going to happen with 526? It's really have no idea. Um, personally, I, I I, don't live in that area. It doesn't affect me. I just know what I go by with, the, with a lot of people. A lot of people are very much for it. A lot of people just think it's just another highway through a pristine area. And speaking of 526, let's talk about Elliot Sunday. Yeah. Talk to me about what do you think his future will look like in your mind? <sighs> I don't know. I'm, you got to give credit to Post and Courier. They've had a story about that. Right. It wasn't something we covered too much of that, where he kind of admitted to kind of playing both sides. Um, 
I don't know it uh, too well, but um, you know, I, I guess sometimes politicians feel like they have to do that. But um, I don't, I, I really don't know. You know, he has a core base of followers. You know, he's, his, his father is very well known here, so um, I can't. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see. I don't know what his future plans are. Well, let's turn from transportation news to good news. Yes. Uh, everyone's still raving about Reagan Saunders and her yes. trip to the Rio Olympics. When you look back at that, where are you personally? Um, she's amazing. I've been following her kind of since I was at the Post and Courier. Yes. Just, um, she's amazing. We were watching a video of her last night when Scotty yes. Eisberg made right. his top 10 stories. Yes. And she threw this heavy ball just so far. It's, it's just crazy. And she went to the Olympics right. and, and unfortunately didn't place, but I mean, she's what, 22, right. 23? Relatively young. Yeah, and she's right from here from Burke. So yes. She's hopefully got a big future. Yeah. Well, let's turn to really the big story in my mind, and that is Hurricane Matthew. Yeah. Um, I personally, I stayed here with the family throughout the entire time, and due to the grace of God, we weathered it. But, you know, when you went around town to Charleston, Mount Pleasant, and whatnot, yeah. you saw tree limbs and some houses being damaged and whatnot. Tell me, when you look back at that, what plays back in your mind as a journalist? Well, I've been here 12 years, and that's really the, I mean, and we hear names every year, right. Ernesto, right. And this one, and that one, right. and, and everybody gets a little nervous, and then nothing happens, happens. And, and you almost saw, I mean, you see people go, oh, they're going to blow this out of proportion again, so it's kind of hard to let people know, it's like, no, this is, you know, we're Real not deal. doing this for, <laughs> right. our, you know, just our own pleasure but let you guys know something's coming and, and this was really the first one though that um, that made them like a huge mark but there's been mm -hmm. others that have eroded the beaches and right. that kind of stuff but this was the one that I mean you saw that video saw some of the videos of yeah. the uh, Colonial Lake right. that came in I mean that was a, a rapids that wasn't even a lake anymore right. that was just crazy so um, but still I mean Charleston stood and survived it um, unfortunately some areas around here everywhere from you know Georgetown to parts of North Carolina right. and then you know even west of us got it worse than us um, but um, it was really interesting to go through that I've I've been through tropical storms that did more damage right just you know like I said we got lucky but um, it was interesting to see and just to see how um, the city kind of responded and um, I mean it was it was a crazy night yes. right? a couple of nights and we, yes. it was a uh, we had all our staff in here and you know everybody was just working long hours and sacrificing their time with their family some of them did bring their pets in and stuff like that but we had producers sleeping under desks yes. and, and I'm just and it was just a it's a marathon you know mm -hmm. it's just like um, you know reporters going from scene to scene out right. they're, they're wet they're soaked they're cold um, and then the anchors are just sitting up like this the whole time just yeah. having it and the weather uh, you know Dave Williams right. and Sonia Stevens right. were just incredible wow. so um, it was neat for me because I haven't been in TV side that long to see but you know just see I think one thing everybody here does so well is when something's happening everybody comes together yeah. so well and, and we've seen that a couple of times now ever since last year so but it's, it's been pretty interesting you talk about your TV side you've been here for what uh, a year and nine months I think wow but who was Andy Powers as, as a television producer social media producer now a journalist, yeah. television journalist. Right. What's that like for you? It's it's as I tell people, it's kind of the same but different. The news is the same, but how we cover it is different. And um, TV is a lot more logistical. Like you know, in the newspaper, when I was a, a reporter, I could just go right. drive up and talk to somebody. Right. Write it, write it if I had to with my paper and pad, right. or I could shoot video or whatever like that. Now it's everything. It's like, do they have the proper camera right. or the, or the uh, um, laptop, do they have a Microphone. live source? Yes, and, and is there some way they're going to transmit it to us? Or, um, or they do have a live source, but they're in an area they can't get a signal, signal. and it's just, it's a, a lot more to it, and, but it's very interesting. Everybody here has been doing this for years, and they, and they, they get it. It's nice to be with the veteran staff who've been kind of teaching me and holding my hand along the way, but um, it's, it's, it's definitely different, and um, you know, I, I spend more of my time now in the office than I used to, but oh. it's, it's, it's really neat. I mean, it's all about having a good staff to work with. Yeah, and I forgot to ask this question too, yeah. but let me go back to this. 2017 will be here in a couple of days. Right. I know you're not a psychic, <laughs> <laughs> but what did you see in your crystal ball? Um, just for Charleston? For news stories wise. Oh my goodness. Um, we'll have new governor. We'll have, um, you know, um, 
Well, you got any ideas? I'm trying to think. Well, what could it be? Uh, what's coming down the pike? Yeah, um, I have no idea what's going to happen. I mean, and on one hand, if anybody deserves a death penalty, he does. Okay. I mean, um, you know, it, as a matter of law, it's it's it is part of our system, and you, I can't imagine a, a more heinous thing that would deserve it. But I'm not on the jury. Right. Uh, jury will decide that, and um, you know, I think even his family is a little conflicted on that. You know, because you know. It all comes down to personal beliefs, but it's a matter of law, and you go, okay, why do we have this instrument right. in our legal system? This is why. Mm -hmm. That's that's how it, it occurs to me. I mean, I I I can't think of anything worse. Yeah. And then, of course, the Michael Slake of uh, federal trial. Right. Um, that will be. That yeah. starts right right in uh, me. Right. So that'll be interesting to see. I mean, that that is the. That's the greatest one to me. Mm. Um, he, the manslaughter is definitely the strongest charge they have with that. Mm. Um, you know, there was a struggle. Um, I don't think it was any, if you watch it from the beginning, there wasn't any intent for, you know, when he pulled him over to do anything. And, and, but, you know, and then when it comes to struggle, and, and but it'll be interesting to see. Mm. I, I'm not a, I'm not a juror or an yeah. attorney. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, Oh, I'm trying to, there's probably some good ideas of what could be coming down the pike. But John Deckenberg, his one year anniversary is yeah, here. Yeah, and he's already started, and, and, and that seemed to be going pretty seamless. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, Joe had the, Mayor Joe Riley had the um, city running really smoothly, and um, it's interesting to see him branch out, like he said he would, to areas like West Ashley. Right. And, you know, which really needs it. West Ashley is really kind of a great place. It has some really neat things going for it, and to see that spread to that area is, is really exciting mm -hmm. um, and so he's got some ideas and there's not too much friction and it, it's nice to see Charleston kind of running without without too many problems not like the federal government right. where everybody's arguing with each other. <laughs> exactly um, but um, I don't know. what else um, but uh, one thing I want to bring up if, if I had to remember 2016 sure. was our tent city coverage, right? You know that was um, back in February. So right. it's still part of the. Um, we went out there. We spent a weekend in Tent City. Uh, Larry Rollo did a fantastic job sure. covering that, and uh, photographer Chris O'Rourke and right. I slept in the tents for two nights. And we were talking about that the other day. It's I, I've still never been as cold in my life mm -hmm. as that. Wow. Um, just because like you can't get inside unless you know. Um, I mean, you just don't go inside and it just chills you down to the core, but uh, we re recently talked to um, probably the main person we talked to for that story, we recently saw her, she's now at a home, oh, she's got her hair done, Fantastic. and she's, yeah, and her, her, with her boyfriend and her brother, and, they're, and she's out, out of there, so it was really nice to see that come up, and it's, it's, we hope to keep following that as it goes along, because not everybody made it at home, and even though they might not be right in the middle of downtown, they're, they're somewhere. Well, Andy Paris, thank you so much for this uh, interview. This was phenomenal. All right, thanks, Clay. Thank you. I appreciate this. All right, thanks again. Thank you.